Welcome to the American Southwest and the Red Rocks of Sedona, Arizona, where we begin the Earth Sky Heart Workshop with author and teacher Drunvalo Melchizedek. Hi, I'm Drunvalo Melchizedek, and welcome to the Earth Sky Heart Workshop. I'll be guiding you through this film as you learn the material. There'll be several sacred ceremonies that you will be experiencing through here and many meditations that you will have to learn and practice as you do this. Take the time, be part of these ceremonies and be part of, this, of the material that you're learning because you need to not just see it and know it, but you need to actually learn it and live it and breathe it. Now I'd like to introduce you to the Creative Life Center. In the main room, there's 120 people from countries all over the world. Uh, that are participating. You will slowly meet these people as they ask questions and as they participate in it through the workshop. They came here as just friends and, and people that barely knew each other and over five days they became very close, almost like a family, uh, through this experience. We filmed this using state-of-the-art cameras and equipment uh, hoping to enhance your experience uh, through these next five days. So relax, get comfortable, and don't be serious. It's better if you approach this as a little child and just relax and not uh, think of everything as so important that you have to learn it or have to know and you have to do it right. Just be there, be present, open your heart and it'll all come to you. You'll all understand it over time uh, and you will remember who you really are. May this work that happens over the next five days be a blessing in your life and all those that you love. Now let's get started with day one, the day of the opening. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> Um, okay, we're in Arizona, uh, Sedona, Arizona, and uh, this is the uh, Earth Sky Heart Workshop. And this is going to be, I don't think they probably told you this, but this is going to be the last one ever. You're at the very, very last one. I, I remember when in 1994 I was doing the Flower of Life, and I did that from 1984 to 1994. And then all of a sudden I realized, wow, it's over, you know, and then other people took it on. There was about 350 facilitators that went around the world to teach it. And then after that I realized, well, there was all kinds of missing stuff. <laughs> there were things that I, I forgot to put in the book. I thought I did, but I didn't. And, uh, and then there was a lot of stuff that I've learned over time. I, it, the evolution just kept going. And, and so this workshop has evolved. Uh, pretty dramatically, especially in the last two or three years. Uh, and at this point, uh, we have permission uh, to change everything. Now, for you who have started with the Merkaba, this is perfect. This is exactly what you need. But in the future, starting in July, uh, we're going to do something very different. It, it actually isn't different in the, content, in the content, it's the way that it is delivered. Uh, initially, um, it was decided by the Ascended Masters that they, they couldn't deliver the, this information the way that they always had. Uh, meaning, uh, they gave it first in a female, from the female point of view and then from the male point of view. And so they began with a heart. That's where they started. They didn't talk about the Merkaba. The Merkaba wasn't the first thing, it was the last thing that was discussed. And that's still true in Tibetan Buddhism. You, uh, if, you're to, if you're studying Tibetan Buddhism, you don't know about the Merkaba. You have to die first before you can find out about it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to die 13 times. You have to go through 13 lifetimes before they even discuss that with you. And then finally they do, and they put you up in a usually like 17, 20,000 feet in the air where it's about 100 below zero and they, and they put wet blankets on you. You're naked and they put wet blankets on you and they say, hope you live. <laughs> <laughs> and you've got about 10 seconds to do it right. And, and all you do is you, you program your Merkaba that it, within it, it's whatever temperature you set at, 
it is that temperature, and you will melt the circle out, and your their teachers can see that taking place, and then they know that you knew or you know what you're talking about. If you don't, you die. And uh, and so, uh, but I don't know if anybody's ever died. <laughs> you can actually get that. You can buy that uh, video. They actually, which is hard for me to believe, but the Tibetans allowed them, which is about seven years ago or so, to uh, video an actual monk doing this. And uh, and you can, I think it's with the Discovery Channel or the History Channel, one of those kind of channels. It would take a little research. I'm sure you could find it, but you can get it and you can see this happening. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, when the... Uh, Ascended Masters first put this out, which was about roughly 1980, before I started teaching. They gave it out through the female way, and nobody showed up but females. <laughs> There'd be like a room full of females and one guy back in the corner feeling his fingernails, you know. <laughs> and, 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 and nobody, uh, nobody came. Uh, not, not both sides of the coin. They, they didn't come. And it was clear after about three or four years that this was not working. And the reason is because uh, when we fell and, and because of a lot of influences from ETs and other kinds of things that were going on, uh, we evolved almost totally left brain and logical. So now we're just a completely, we're, we're like becoming Dr. Spock, you know. I mean, we're, we're becoming a male race. And, uh, and so it was decided to switch over and reverse this and begin with uh, the Merkaba. And they waited until uh, w they knew what would happen is that eventually we would see, find, discover crystals, which we did, and then we all got into these crystals and you know, the whole movement, wow, wow, look at crystals, and they started realizing they're alive. But eventually they look inside and they see all the geometries. And when they did, that's when we introduced uh, sacred geometry in 1984. And, and it worked. I mean, uh, the, the men were attracted to this because it was logical and it made sense. And so it, it pulled them in and, and that was required. We couldn't just do the women. We had to do both the men and the women. And so that worked and, uh, and it's been continuing up. But it had a lot of uh, side effects that normally don't happen. Uh, because we introduce something as sacred as the, as, the, as the Merkaba, while people still had these huge egos, uh, it caused uh, people to take it, run with it, change it, make all kinds of changes in it that you can't do. You can't change even one tiny thing in it or it doesn't work. And it's just exactly like, uh, like the Torah, where in the Torah if you change one letter you can throw away the book because it doesn't represent what it, what it was trying to put out. And this is the same way. It has to be done in this particular way. It took billions of years to get there. And a lot of life was lost. Whole planets were destroyed because they were attempting to do something that didn't work. And, uh, and, so it's, and the other reason you can't change it is because the Earth, all the planets, and the Sun are all ro rotating with a, t a tetrahedral macabre at 3421. And so if you use any other Merkaba and you're trying to go through ascension to higher consciousness, you have a problem <laughs> because you're not in harmony and, free and, and in frequency uh, with the earth and she is the one that's going to do this ascension. It's not you. You may think you're doing it, but she's doing it. And, uh, and you need to be in harmony with her as you move through these various levels of consciousness. When we get to the fourth dimension, she's going to change her Merkaba to something else. Who knows what she's going to change it to? <laughs> it's, it's, she's a woman. She'll do anything. <laughs> we don't know what she's going to do. We know all the options that she could do, but what she's going to do and actually do, we'll find out. And when we do, ours will also change automatically. We will, we will map right with her as she makes all these changes. Anyway, all this uh, for the last 10 years has had certain problems that we've never seen before, but uh, we've made it to this point, and we have made it, by the way. We're, we're going to go for sure, absolutely, we're going to go all the way. Uh, uh, humanity is not going to do a wipeout, and there was a lot of life. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I was pretty excited when I found out too. <laughs> well, because I found out, I mean, uh, there are a lot of life around the universe that really didn't think we were going to make it. You know, they just said, there's no way, we can't possibly do this. And, uh, but we did. And it's, it was a big surprise for a lot of people. And then there were all these other people, they will make it, absolutely, they're going to make it. <laughs> and, uh, but because we were affecting everyone, what happens here is going to affect ev all life everywhere, without any exception. It's going to affect everyone. And uh, now that the universe knows it's worked and, and, and everything, uh, people have relaxed everywhere because it was kind of scary for a while for some people. When I say people, I'm meaning ET people that are, <laughs> there are still people, they just look different. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, what we have permission to do is to completely rewrite this uh, back to the way that it was originally given. And, uh, and we can do this now because we have changed. We are not who we were 25 years ago or so. We have really, really, really changed. I mean, a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about in this workshop today, 25 years ago, if you even brought it up, they'd just throw you in a garbage can or something. They wouldn't ever believe you or, or think it was even possible. And uh, so we are a different... We have already made changes within us that are huge. And, uh, and because of this, we can begin in the original way. And we start with the heart. And we actually move up the chakra instead of down. And, uh, and it's, uh, for, at this point, it will be a lot easier, a lot simpler than, it, than the route that you guys took. Uh, the Merkaba is complicated. Sacred geometry is complicated. Well, you don't even have to know that stuff. Uh, here, we're going to begin with the heart. We're going to learn about sexual energy and the relationship of it. Uh, move up the... Th Th up the throat through the through to uh, the uh, the tongue and from there up to the thalamus gland there's a whole thing that we're going to still do it but we're going to do this in a different order and what happens is when you do it in this other order um, at least this is what has always happened before we won't know for sure if this is going to happen until we see it happen but what has always happened before is when you do it in this other way the Merkaba happens automatically you don't even have to do it it just goes out. It's still just as powerful. Uh, you can still program it and work like it any, any other way, but you don't even need to know it has tetrahedrons. You don't have to know anything, uh, which is pretty much how most people throughout the universe uh, learn this. They, they learned it by experience and then later studied it and understood what it was internally, but uh, th they picked it up right away. And this is happening all over the world right now. There's people that don't know, even know what the word Merkaba is, and they're just sitting there. But because of the changes that are happening within us, uh, they're just, it's just happening to them. They're just sitting in a bathtub or something, and, and they can feel this thing rotating around them, you know. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you know, and they're figuring it out. Uh, it, that began in right before the turn of the last century is when we started noticing that happen around the world. It's going a lot faster now. There are millions and millions. There's probably over at least 100 million people in the Merkabas now. I mean, it's really out there. And it's moving faster at this moment. This is a great time to be alive. <laughs> it is. It's just exciting. Yeah, I, I can hardly stand it. What's going on with the sun right now is awesome. <laughs> and, and the magnetic fields. It looks like the science thinks that it's negative. They think that this is scary and uh, it potentially could shut the planet down. I mean, literally close it down. But uh, I'm going to talk about this in depth at one point, probably on the third day, uh, because there's something going on that if you understand it and you understand what it is and you know, how to, and you know your energy fields, you can take this energy and make it really positive instead of negative. And, uh, and, our, so, and because it's happening right now, it's making people all over the world sick. There, there's lots and lots of people getting sick, and there's about 35 different types of sickness and illnesses coming out from it. But it's all being caused by the magnetic field and the stress that's in the magnetic field right now. But uh, we'll get into all this. And anyway, 
uh, beginning in July, there will be uh, a, a new training for anyone who wishes to teach this work. If you want to, and if you think you can, uh, you can. However, we're only going to give two of these trainings. We're not going to do this all the time. I mean, maybe it might be another one in the future, but there's one in, there's one in July and there's one in January 2012. And that's mostly for the f Flower of Life facilitators that exist out there right now so they, they can be retrained in this new way, which includes everything, not just the Merkaba, but the whole thing, what, what you're going to receive, but in a different order. So I just wanted to let you know that so you understood that this is, this is it. This is the last one. <laughs> and, um, and to talk about this one now, the, the Erskai Heart, the way it's evolved, it, it has changed quite a bit over the years, and especially the last day, we have something uh, different in there completely because there's another level of consciousness that we have to... Um, we have to not just understand it. I mean, we have to be it. We have to know it. And it, well, you have to learn... In order to get into the other levels and stay stable, and, uh, and in order to continue on, which is what we're going to have to do, you have to know that you are creating every single thing in the universe with every breath you're taking. This is hard to understand right now, but you have to know what the creation process is and you have to know exactly how it works, precisely how things... Can, how, and there's two different ones. There's one that you can do from your brain and one from your heart. And you have to understand the one from the brain, but don't use it. <laughs> because you'll understand when we get there. And then there's another way to create from the heart. And once you understand that way of creating from the heart, you can change your lives in any way you want. It's okay. The heart will make this creation, make the change, without doing any harm to anyone anywhere on any level of existence. And you can have anything you want. And it's okay. You can have all the money you want. You can have uh, all, all the, whatever it is that you feel you need. Uh, it's not a problem. Uh, but that's not the reason you're doing it. <laughs> you're doing it just so that you can... You, you have to choose things to understand. Like with Jesus, he had to turn water into wine. He had to do that, and he had to do it publicly so that, so that he, could, he couldn't just hide it. He had to show that he was doing it. Eventually, you'll have to do it publicly too. Uh, you have to sh see that, it's, uh, that it is real. And, but, uh, but it's dangerous. There's danger associated with this too because of the ego can, is still involved in this process as you're beginning to understand. And so when you, enter, when you enter into the creation process, while your ego is still there, there's always this concern that your ego will see yourself doing something that's kind of outrageous and go, wow, look how look how great I am. <laughs> wow, I'm a pretty important person. You know, and then start going out and publicly demonstrating to make money and fame and all this other kind of stuff. You just lost the game. It's just over. You've got to wait till your next lifetime because uh, uh, you just uh, crashed and burned, basically. Uh, you have to be very careful entering into this. But on the other hand, you have no choice. You have to go through it. And the Hindus... You know, we're, I've spent so much time discussing this. These are the siddhas, the powers of, of what are human potential. And, uh, but still, you, you, it is dangerous only because of the ego. Uh, it is also dangerous if it's done through the brain because uh, the brain is a polarized instrument and uh, it is male on one side and female on the other. And so whatever you create, whatever your intention is that you create through the brain, you will get what you ask for but you also, from the direction that you can't see, back here, will come something that you really don't want. It'll be exactly the opposite of what your intention was. And, uh, and uh, the people that are working with a the secret, they're figuring that one out, probably about now. <laughs> <laughs> they're all in court with each other and fighting. They made $600 million in that DVD. And it's all being frozen. They're all fighting with each other. And, it's, uh, it's, and the things are coming back to them from the other way, like with James Ray, what happened with him. 
you know, and so, uh, but there is a way to go into this, into this process, uh, which we'll show you over the next five days, that you don't have to have any fear at all, a, a worry or, or concern or anything because uh, of where it's being generated from and from within the heart. And the heart is really intelligent and, and has this deep, deep wisdom and knows exactly how to give you what you want without polarizing it because it's not, the heart is not polarized and without doing harm. Uh, the brain doesn't care if it does harm. Uh, the ego just doesn't, it just doesn't care. Usually it doesn't care. Maybe somebody's brain does, but most of them don't. <laughs> okay. Uh, now this workshop here, since we're talking about two different ones, this one, Air Sky Heart, is, divided, is in five days long. And, uh, and I'm just going to talk about the different days. They're really utterly different each day. This day I call the day of the opening. And, uh, and really, most of the... Uh, most of what's going on during, during this time uh, is not physical. It has to do with your, our, all of our higher selves are right now having a party somewhere. <laughs> and they're all laughing and talking and exchanging energy in different ways and doing things. Uh, and they're all excited, I'm sure, because they know that you're here physically and, and we're all going to get this. But anyway, what's, that's, the party is what's really important. <laughs> Uh, it's the connection that we are making right now. This connection started a long time ago, the moment you decided to come here. Uh, we connected in the dream world. Probably a lot of you may remember this, some of you may not, but uh, probably a very large number do remember. And uh, we used the ancient Egyptian uh, uh, temple of dreams and, the, and what they've learned in that as a school to begin the process. But once we actually get here in this day, this is when uh, this thing happens on, on another level of existence that is really important. Uh, so, so what happens on this day, we could just sit around and hang out under trees or something, you know. I mean, really, uh, we, we, it is the essence of what's happening is, is this thing. Um, but, you know, I'm going to use the time. <laughs> but uh, that's the most important thing that's going on. Um, then tomorrow uh, we're going to switch from that to uh, the body itself and it'll be a day of healing and, and primarily working on the chakra system and specifically on the two heart chakras. You have, you have one heart chakra here and another one here and this one's connected directly to the heart and the upper one's connected to the right brain. And uh, so we have two emotional bodies. We have one here, which is one where you function from, which is polarized, which has love and hate, etc., back and forth. And then we have this other emotional body, which most of us have never experienced, um, which is the same range of uh, positive emotions, but it has no negative ones at all. It's the only place that unconditional love can actually really exist. There is no such thing as unconditional love from the brain. And that's where we usually are attracted to our mates. <laughs> we see them because we like the way they look or whatever, or their money or something, whatever it is about them that we like. And, uh, and, and then we say we love each other, but that love is conditional. All that person has to do is just say the wrong things at the wrong time and it's over. <laughs> but uh, not true with the heart. If you actually fell in love with someone from your heart, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't make any difference what you were doing. Uh, you would never stop loving that person, ever. And uh, so it's, this is another part of all of this. So we're going to focus on these two heart chakras because that's where most of our trauma is. Uh, we also have deep uh, trauma in our sexual chakra, but it's usually related. There's usually a relationship between it. If you get this, you'll get a lot of the sexual trauma also. And, uh, and this is stopping a lot of people from being able to spiritually evolve. Uh, it, there are other things that are stopping us. There's other levels in our emotional body that's not the only thing. But this is the biggest one. And so if we can just get that one, uh, uh, you'll find that your meditation is easier, clearer, and you can uh, expand farther. If you don't do anything uh, about this, then what happens is you go up, 
you hit a certain level of meditation, and then you can go for 30 years and you don't go one inch further because those, those traumas stop you from proceeding any further. And so uh, it's important that we do this. And it's kind of fun, the way it's been laid out. This was Archangel Michael who created this. It was not me. Uh, maybe tomorrow when we get into it, I'll, I'll talk about it. <clears throat> and then after that, uh, we're going to go into day three, which is the day of the mind. Again, total shift to, to something completely different. And we're going to... Uh, a, a lot of concepts and ideas and, uh, of everything that we're going to try to straighten out so that you can understand what is going on and what's happening on a lot of different levels. Uh, it, it helps your, your mental way of perceiving what's going on. And that also can... Uh, ideas can also stop you. Uh, look what religions do and, uh, and a lot of things because... Uh, if you have the wrong concept, uh, it, can, uh, it can stop you also. And, uh, and then on the fourth day, uh, we go into the day of the heart. And, uh, and that is the... Uh, I, I usually hardly wait for that day. <laughs> I, I like it. And, uh, and it's, it's a totally soft a different kind of uh, day that, uh, distinctly different than the day before which is the mind we're going to go into the heart and that'll be all day long and then on the uh, fifth day the last day we're going to go into what's called Tantra of the heart and uh, because uh, sexual energy is important in life it isn't just pleasure there is a lot more associated with it uh, uh, Sexual energy can create a human being, a baby, but it can also create anything in existence. Planets, galaxies, anything. Uh, it takes three people to do it. You can't do it by yourself <coughs> uh, when you start creating on these levels. Uh, but it takes three people to create a baby. It takes one mommy, a daddy, and a baby. And one is male, one is female, and the baby can be male or female. So it takes two males and a female, or two females and a male, to create anything on these higher levels. That's minimum. You can have a lot more. Sometimes there's hundreds or thousands more that are working together to do things, but that's the minimum number. And so we're going to go into... The, that's where we're going to get deep into the creation process of how everything works. And, uh, and so... Uh, this is a school. This is, uh, uh, you know, and, and we might laugh and have fun and play and all kinds of other things, but uh, we're going to still keep focusing on trying to give you uh, the knowledge and understanding and direct experience uh, so that you can proceed uh, in your way of, uh, of evolving. And we're all different. Okay, I think that's about it. Um, uh, I don't know exactly, uh, there's, uh, by the way, there are certain, uh, though I have it all written down where we're going to go, kind of, uh, there's a lot of little branches that go off, and it depends on who you are and what you need. So I don't know, this one may not be exactly the same as another one that we do, because it depends on, on what the needs are uh, of the group. But whatever it is, that's what we're going to do because we are going to be a big family before this is all over. It's hard to imagine because we're from all over the world. But uh, we all really have the same core, same purpose, reason, same desires in life. We're, we're human beings. And, and we have one mother. That's Mother Earth. And, uh, and we have one uh, Divine Father, which is the Son itself. Uh, and, and we have one, uh, there is only great spirit, there is just one spirit that moves through all life everywhere. So even weird looking E.T. is really your brother or sister. I mean, we're all interrelated. And, uh, and life right now uh, really does love us and care. I have to add a little thing. I have to say, I apologize for what the greys and the reptiles have done. <laughs> Because when that was our first introduction to to other life, 
And those guys were just here to kill us and get rid of us. They had good reason to, if you, know, if you understand what, what was going on and why we destroyed over 100 of the great planets. Whole planets. Killed everybody on it. We did it. And that's why they were here, because uh, otherwise they would have never came here. And they came here to uh, find out what we were doing and then to uh, try to correct it, which they couldn't. And then they just wanted to eliminate us. Uh, that's over. Well, with the gray side it is. It's not quite over with the reptiles yet, but it's almost over. And it will be over with very, very soon. And, uh, and what's behind that is the rest of the universe. And, and, uh, and at, on, at this moment right now, there is a mi- somewhere between 250,000 to maybe as many as 300,000 different cultures, different races, sp- species that are here on Earth right now. And, uh, and they are, are here out of pure love. Uh, they're extremely high beings. They understand the situation. They came here to raise our consciousness because we weren't going to make it on our own. And, uh, and, and their, t- <laughs> their time is about to go. Uh, you're going to see the love. You're going to feel it. And it's almost here. So, and, uh, so uh, you're, you're going to see this just over the next two, three years or less. You're, you're going to realize that how much life is here. And, and how much they care about us and how powerful they are. They're incredible. And, uh, and so that's why I was apologizing, apologizing about the, the grays and reptiles because, and there's a few other little races that are with them uh, because uh, they had an agenda and they were trying to fulfill that agenda. But uh, that's going to end and it's going to be replaced with something that's going to make you feel a lot better about life. <laughs> Okay, I will tell you a little bit about myself because you're going to ask me the questions anyway, so I, a few things. Uh, I'm married. My wife is Claudette. Uh, I have five kids. I've been very busy. <laughs> uh, three of them from another family. They're ranging from about 35 to 39. And then I'm starting all over with an 18-year-old and a 20-year-old girl, Marley and Mia, and they're... They live here. And uh, what are the questions you asked me? I can't remember. Where am I from? Where I am originally from? <laughs> okay. Well, I'm definitely an ET. There's no doubt about it. I'm not from here at all. And, uh, I, but where I'm from is where we're going. And uh, that's part of the reason why I'm here is to... I, I had, a, I had a, a frequency of where I was from and then the Ascendant Masters took that from me <laughs> and figured out how to get back there. They, they made three or four attempts and then finally in about the mid-90s they were convinced and they all left, all of them except for seven of them. And now about 4,000 of them are still... 4,000 people from humanity are now in the new world where we're a new universe that we're going to and then about 4,000 of them came back here and, and they're, they have that knowledge of how to do this that's why I know we're going to make it we're, we're, we've made it really part of humanity is already there they're, they're no different Ascended Master is no different than you or me they, they just are a little bit further along a little bit, not much, but enough to, uh, it looks like a lot maybe, but it isn't really. You're going to be there very, very soon. And, uh, and so I, uh, and then when it coming in, just a, I spent about 15 years on the Pleiades, on a particular planet there. It's kind of like going down in water or climbing a mountain. You can't just go to the top or go to the bottom. You've got to go down in stages and you have to learn things. And so that's what the Pleiades is like a university or a school. And so I was learning about Earth. And then I went to, the, to Sirius for about a year. I'm talking about Earth year times. Uh, about a year there, uh, which they gave me very definite training on that. And then I flew here in a big ship, a really big one. It took 400 people just to fly it. 
and uh, and uh, and I came here, came to Venus first because that's uh, there are. It's the headquarters of this solar system, and you have to get permission. And we are already going through that stages. And then I came here. I came here in 1840, and but immediately went in to the fourth dimension of the Earth looking for somebody, <laughs> and there was nobody there, and nobody that had any consciousness hardly, and then went up and uh, found them all, all these center masters were in the sixth dimension of the earth's uh, awareness, and sp- spent about ten years trying to understand, and then I felt like I knew it, I came down and I was born my first lifetime here in 1850, and, uh, and then died in 1890, but I made so many mistakes, oh my God, I, I just... I just, I did everything wrong possible. <laughs> and I was so sure that I had it down. And, and so then I, w- I went back there and I said, God, you guys didn't tell me all this stuff, you know. <laughs> it hurts to be down here. And, and, uh, and so I stayed a long time. And the time is different. As you go up in dimensions, time gets longer, bigger. You have more of it. And so I was there from 1890 to 1972. That was 82 years. That's a long, 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 long time. And I figured, okay, now I've got it. And I didn't, wasn't born normally. I walked into this body on just a couple of days, uh, April 10th of 1972, and, and been here ever since. That's the birthday. Yeah, well, I can say that's, that's my birthday because that's when I came in. But the body was older. The body's 70 years old, but I'm only 39. <laughs> but I can only say that for one more year. <laughs> and um, oh yeah, I, he asked if I remember this. I remember everything. That uh, um, we have within our heart, a special little place that records everything. Everything we've ever said, ever done, ever felt, scratching our head, anything. It's total Kashic Records personal. We also, and so it's all there, and uh, you will remember. In fact, uh, the, the name of this school that we're going to reverse this whole thing, and it's called the School of Remembering. Because the, you, you don't need to learn anything. You, you're all masters. You all know this stuff inside and out. You just had a bump on your head and, you, and you're just a little forgot a little bit. And all you have to do is remember. When you connect back into your heart properly, uh, all your memories will come back. You'll remember everything. But it isn't just your memories. It's the entire universe. It's the Akashic records of everything. Not just the past but the past, the present, and the eternal future, it, all, everything, it's all recorded. It's already happened. This is kind of weird for us to try to understand this now, but, but what we're doing has already occurred. This is why the, the, uh, in the Torah, they can, in the, there's a code inside the Torah that they call the Bible code, but it was really just the Torah code. And in there, every word that I'm saying right now is written down. It's already happened. That's my name. Uh, they gave it to me. I didn't have. I, I was Melchizedek, but they gave me this name specifically for Earth, uh, Drumvalo Melchizedek. Uh, um, I don't know why they gave me that name. They just did. They said, "Here's your name." I go, "Thank you very much." Uh, what is it now? I say it again. <laughs> uh, it's a Druid name. Uh, in fact, the whole name Dr- uh, Drumvalo and Melchizedek is an English Druid name. And the Druids see Melchizedek as living in the center of the earth. And, uh, and so they look down. Uh, that uh, understanding is so wise. I mean, in terms of how, where life is and how it works. Uh, if, if we have time, I don't know if we will or not. Uh, uh, that's part of the, what's called the advanced workshop of this. Uh, but the center of the earth is... Uh, exactly identical to what's outside the earth. The entire stars, planets, everything, in the same exact arrangement, same precise everything. 
uh, exists in the very, very center of the earth in a, in a spot so small that you couldn't see it if it was here right now. And, and, and this, is, this is what it's all about. Uh, the, the Fibonacci, I mean, the golden mean uh, rectangle rotates in, or the spiral, if you want to look it up that way, rotates in forever and ever and ever, going in and getting smaller and smaller and smaller forever. That's what's in the earth. But from this place where we are right now, whatever size you start at, it'll also rotate out forever and ever and ever and expand forever and ever. And that's what you see out there. And, and they are the same. Uh, Nassim Harriman is actually proving this right now. Uh, he's a, a physicist. PhD, I believe. He, he's not PhD? What is he? Self-taught. Self-taught. He's not... He doesn't have a degree? No, he doesn't. I didn't know that. He has been for 30 years to think outside the box. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. That's interesting to know that because he was putting himself off like he was. Uh, uh, that's why he calls himself scientist. Okay. What we're going to do now is I have to check your macabas. Now, everybody here is supposed to have been practicing this for at least six weeks before you got here so you, you can understand. But still, what I've discovered all over the world is that uh, people make mistakes. They don't understand something and they start doing a practice in there and that practice is not going to benefit them at all. And so we need to correct these things. Most of them are, are talked about in the, uh, uh, in the books, but people just sort of glance over that, they just keep right on going and they never really notice it. And so there's things I have to find out. Uh, if you have mistakes. Let me see. One of these things is uh, probably, I'm just going to start with the most important one um, because this one uh, is essential because if you are doing it wrong, it will, you will eventually start getting sick and eventually you'll die. So, I mean, it's pretty important. <laughs> <laughs> And there's people out there actually teaching this, which is, really blows my mind. And there's nothing I can do or you can do about it. It's just the way it is. There's got to be casualties in this. Um, but you can't reverse your field. Uh, uh, if you reverse your field, it's an anti-life force. And it'll actually kill you. Uh, and everybody knows this everywhere. Uh, you can just look at the planets. From the, if you look at the from north pole of all the planets, they're all rotating, and the sun, they're rotating counterclockwise. And, um, uh, it, it, when a planet starts to rotate the other way, everything on it will die. Even if it has an atmosphere and water and everything else, it would, it would die. It would, the planet's time is different. It would take a while. It might take a thousand years, but it would eventually happen. If you go into nature anywhere, uh, you'll see vortexes. Uh, Sedona is not the only place that has vortexes. They're everywhere. Though you, there are places where you can go where there's just like none. I mean, there are areas that they're just, you won't find very many. But this place is loaded with them. And they're about, a, little tiny ones are about every three feet. They're all over the place. If you put a pendulum out, especially when you get into the red rocks, you, you, you'll see this. Um, and, but if you go into where there's trees, and you can, not just rocks, but where there's trees and plants and things like that, you'll see these, they're perfect circles usually. They're absolutely flawless most of the time. They're perfectly round circles. And everything, and they're, they're the thickness of even a thinner than a sheet of paper of, of where you're in it and not in it. And uh, like there's one, how many people have been to, uh, what's it called, uh, the mystery spot in California? You know, you, it, it, in these vortexes, they make all kinds of distortions. You have one there, I think of the mystery spot where you have a, a thing like this, you put the ball at the bottom and it rolls up. There's another one there where they have a piece of concrete that's halfway in the vortex and halfway out of the vortex and, uh, and it's perfectly level. And you can bring your own level. There's a level on it, but you can bring your own level and see it's perfectly level. And you can have two people exactly the same size, one standing in, on this thing at the same thing, one standing inside. And you're about, well, the person inside is about five, four or five inches shorter. And you change places and look back the other way and all of a sudden you're really short and they're really tall. And uh, you can explain it in any way you want, but there's distortions that take place inside of these things. 
Well, what you'll also find is that, uh, especially here, you can see them here, where there's trees and everything, that if a tree is inside there, the tree trunk is going to rotate in the direction of, of the vortex. And so you'll see tree trunks that are just twisted around like this. If they happen to be in a, a, a anti-clockwise um, or, or, or counterclockwise uh, vortex, as you're looking down at it from the north, uh, they will be stronger and better and healthier. Even though they're all twisted up, they'll be, they'll be doing great. Uh, if you go to one where you see a tree that is it's rotating the other way, the tra- tree is usually dead. It means that the vortex happened after it started, started to grow. And everything, and you won't see any, any little bushes or anything in there at all. They'll be long gone after that. It'll just be totally vacant. Wherever you see a positive one, it goes up in the air comes back down, and it reverses the field by doing that. And, uh, and, uh, and so you, wherever there's a positive one, there's always a negative one. They always, there's, they always link together. Uh, and, uh, well, we're the same way. And, and so if you rotate your field this way, uh, you're fine. But if you switch those fields and go that way, You've just created an anti-life force field around your body and you're going to get weak and eventually get sick and eventually you won't be able to survive. Uh, and so i got to see if anybody's doing this. <laughs> it's really simple. From a point in front of you, are you rotating the male one to your left, 34? Is there anybody not doing that? No? from a point in front. If you pick the point... Once I had a person who was really sick, they got, it ended up in a wheelchair, and they were getting... This is only about three or four years into doing the Merkaba, and they were just getting sicker and sicker and sicker. And when she described it to me, she was saying, no, I'm doing exactly what you're saying. Uh, and I just couldn't understand it because it just the symptoms were so clear to me. And, but she was saying, no, no, I'm going... Uh, 34 to the left and 34 to the right. And then after a long discussion with her, I found out she didn't pick a point in front, she picked a point in the back. So why? I don't know. But she was going 34 this way, 21 this way, and it reversed the field. As soon as she switched it back the other way and chose a point in front of her so the the reference was correct, uh, all of her symptoms went away and she's fine. Uh, and so nobody's doing that here, I don't think. Okay. Yes. Oh, we need a, the mic. This is Natalia here who's bringing, just to introduce you. <laughs> huh? I changed my name. Oh, you did? What is it? Olivia. Olivia? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, Olivia. I didn't know that. <laughs> in the book and the explanation and in the, in the whole rotation with one going one way and one going the other way, I found that in, in meditating, it was so complex that my brain just, just it, it curled. It just started. So yeah. I just gave the intent for it to do what it does. So I couldn't tell you which way it's going because I haven't tried to. Well, to actually, that works perfect. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's two ways of creating the Merkaba. One is male and one is female. And the male way has to know every little detail and has to stay within the boundaries of the logical patterns. But the female doesn't work on logic. Uh, She works in another way, which is mostly intention, like you were just saying. And uh, and you can do that. But I was... My instructions were to teach the male way, to get the males to come into this. Uh, Now, with this new way that we're about to do it, that's exactly what will happen when you get to the final patterns you get all these things linked up, you just tell it to do it and you don't even have to know what's spinning around you or what or how and it'll do it perfectly. And, and it's mostly women throughout the world that are doing it in this way. That men can do it just as well, but men tend to want to go to the logical way. And, uh, and so you're fine. Okay? Uh, the, the next one... Is, uh, is there anybody here that is doing the Merkaba? Let me get this. Where, 
where you have a... Oh, I'll try to lock this. <laughs> Don't move, no. <laughs> I want to move. Um, <laughs> with this point... This is the male point forward and the female point forward. It doesn't really matter. I'll use the male one. But is there anybody taking this male or the sun tetrahedron and spinning it one way and the female one and spinning it in the other way? Is there anyone doing that? It, it, just so you know, there's a spectrum of macabas that are possible. The universe has found a little more than 100,000. It's about 100,000 and, and 200 approximately. And that's what they've learned. And they're probably, they haven't found a new one in a very, very long time because they've exhausted all possibilities. But uh, the, if you spin the top one one way and the bottom one the other way, that's the first one. It's the very first, simplest, easiest way to create an energy field around your body. And uh, medicine men and shamans all around the world have been doing this for thousands of years. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just that it's very, very limited. It, uh, you can go fourth dimensional, but you can't go any higher. And so you can do fancy things. I mean, you can disappear. You can, you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and you can gain information and knowledge and lots of things you can do that shamans have done with it. But it's not capable of making the movement that we need to make. And so they eliminated that one and went to the second one. And the second one is the realization that there's actually three sets of these things. And, and they're on the same axis. And so uh, w when they're stationary, which is where, where they are around most people, you, you, if you could psychically see them, you'd just see one set sitting there when there's actually three because of the same size and the same axis. But there's one set that is male, that is electrical in nature, and it's uh, basically our, our mind, and it moves this way counterclockwise relative to where I am. And then the, the female one, which is magnetic in nature and is the emotional body work, and it goes the other way. And then there's one that's fixed that doesn't move. Uh, however, just so you understand, because a lot of people don't understand this, uh, the, the, the difference between 34 and 21 is 13. And so the whole thing, if you put it into a computer and, and made this computer model to do it, you'd see it. The whole thing rotates around counterclockwise at 13 while the other things are doing this thing in, between, in the middle in there. Uh, it, it's, yes, it is complicated. Uh, the human body is complicated. If you look inside the muscles and all the nerves and all the stuff that's in here, it's amazing what's going on inside here. And our light body is actually really simple compared to, uh, to the other, but it's still complicated. So... Just with your intention, make sure that you understand that it's a full set going that way, a full set going that way, and one set that's fixed. And, the, and it'll be fine. However, uh, well, let me find out if there's any other... Because if you have been doing this with just the top one one and the bottom one other one, when you switch, when you realize the situation and you switch to this system, usually for the first time, what I see a lot of times may not happen, now, but it usually does, the person just breaks out in a sweat. I mean, just like, they get really hot and start sweating. And it lasts about five minutes, and it never happens again. So I'm just telling you that now, so that if you do change this later, and you do break out in the sweat, just don't worry about it. It'll go away, and you'll never have it again. I don't, it's the body, uh, there's a lot, this is a lot more energy. Uh, it's a, really a many, many, many times more energy, and the body, when it actually experiences it, uh, sometimes has a little reaction. <laughs> oh, one, one more. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So when I started doing it, I I did the top and the bottom, mm -hmm. and I felt the heat. And now I understand. I understand what happened. But then I switch it. But when I when I do the intention, instead of spinning like like this and like that. Mm -hmm. It spins like this. Over the top. It spins like that. Why? I mean, it's just, it's, it's just happening. There are a few people in the world that it happens with. It's very, very rare. You're, you're about one in maybe four or five hundred thousand people. 
uh, it's very rare that instead of spinning this way, it spins over the top, it does that. If that's what's happening with you, and it's natural, you didn't intend it or force it or anything to do it, uh, don't worry about it. Stay there and just do it coming out at the sides rather than out through the axis. Uh, it's, it's, uh, <clears throat> they, the angels actually had me learn how to do that. And, but I never understood why they had me learn how to do that. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of things we can do with this that I don't talk about, and that's one of them. Uh, do you... Um, I've only met maybe three or four people. You're probably about the fifth one ever. Uh, do you have a... All of these other people had this particular problem. And it was that if they stand in a certain direction, in a certain place, and they stand there for a little bit, they begin to dissolve, they disappear. So nothing like this has ever happened to you? Mm, not yet. Not, <laughs> not ever. But, you, but you're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a yoga teacher in, in Seattle, and he said he just had to be really, really careful, because if he stood in a certain direction, which was kind of like a, 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 I was toward the north somewhere. And he says, if I stay there for more than four or five minutes, I just absolutely go poof, I'm gone. And he's done it in front of his people, not intentionally, and freaked them out. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were really concerned, am I doing something wrong, what's going to happen to me or anything? But, but my inner guidance is saying, no, there's these really strange people that ha have this, and, uh, and it's okay. You have a function in the reality. It's like every person in the every cell in the body. You've got red cells, but you've got these little white cells that you know go around and, and keep everything clean and stuff. And so, there, your your function in reality is a little different uh, for what you do. But you're really important. And so, uh, on the on the bigger level of life, and so uh, just go with it and don't worry about it. Okay. Is that it? Looks like it. Oh, one, one more. So what's the ideal? Ideally, for most people, the, the one set of these should be going from a point in front of you to your left 34 times around, while this one is going around 21 times around, female. And that's a ratio. It's a Fibonacci ratio. Those are Fibonacci numbers. And... Uh, uh, yeah. they're, they're all Fibonacci possibilities. So there's a there's a, a 3421. There's a 3455. You could reverse it and go the other way. You can actually use reverse fields, but you have to know how to do it. A, a reverse field is putting the female stronger than the male, and uh, and when that happens, it's dangerous. <laughs> uh, uh, it is that actually, dangerous from the male point of view? It, it's da <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> uh, it takes two males to balance her when she's, when she's strong. It takes one below and one above. We, we did this work a long time ago in one of them, and then a lot of people uh, didn't realize that that wasn't even for human beings. It was for planets. That's when we were activating the Earth's Merkaba field. And her Merkaba field had been shut down for over 500 years. It was actually uh, recorded in the Mayan calendar it's about 528 years ago from right now, approximately. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, Amaterasu in Japan, uh, it was exactly the same year that she went inside the earth also. And so we went into this darkness at that time. But, uh, well, just to, s to keep it shorter, because we've, we've only got one minute. Um, uh, I lost where I was going with that. Okay. Uh, got it to Amaterasu and... <laughs> uh, huh? Well, oh, the, well, the ideal for us now, for most people, and there are exceptions, is a star tetrahedron, tetrahedronal Merkaba rotating 34 times and 21 times. And that's for us right now. Again, once we make this consciousness change, uh, we're going to go up in energy dramatically. Our body is going, our body right now is almost pure mass and very little energy. Uh, when we get through here, our body is going to be almost pure energy and very little mass. Uh, in fact, if you, if I, if I was forced to missional right now, you wouldn't be able to see me, but I'd be here. 
but you wouldn't be able to see me because my, my atoms are at such tremendous distances that you just see right through me. It's really true with everything. I mean, th these walls and everything, there's nothing there. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it's all space. It's just like looking into the stars. It's all space. There's very, very little uh, matter there. Yeah. So when I see through my hand, is that the same? As what? As when I, my hand disappears and I look at it? Well, uh, it means that you, your consciousness is beginning to, to as long as it's not an illusion that's happening with you. Uh, uh, well, I mean, that's possible too. Uh, but uh, I know I've done what you're talking about. And, and if you do, you're starting to interface with the fourth dimension and you, and you can see right through it. Uh, we have a lot of potential. We, we, have, we can do all kinds of things and we don't have any ideas so we don't do them. But uh, human potential is just unbelievable. And, and it doesn't happen all over the world because we don't know how we can do these things and, uh, and what's possible. But, yeah, you could see right through walls. You can do uh, amazing things. If, uh, you can even walk through walls. Uh, they've got three... The Chinese scientists, their scientific thing, have re completely recorded and using scientific method, have now three human beings that have walked through a solid wall. And that was recorded in uh, the science journals uh, uh, all the way up there. But other scientists read this and they go, they don't even know what to do with it. They just turn the page and keep going because, <laughs> you know, they don't know where it is. But uh, it is, they've, they've watched people do this. Yeah. Uh, last, uh, I've been doing the Merkaba for about over six weeks, and I've been doing the single, mm -hmm. the the the, the uh, left of the male and the right of the female, and just the single, and that's why I couldn't quite understand the book. Mm -hmm. But last night I started doing the set of Merk of. You got the whole set going. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And I will always before was cold, always cold. We actually have a thermostat in our body. It's right here at the, at the thymus gland, right here. And uh, you can set it. You can change your thermostat so you're warm or cool, whatever you want. And they teach this as one of the siddhas in, in India. I used to have a guy in Taos when I was living there. He came out of India, and he, it was in the summer, and he was wearing shorts and a T-shirt and nothing else, no shoes or anything. And then in, when we approached winter uh, in Taos, he gets 25 below zero. And, uh, and at 25 below zero, I remember going, I'm in down jackets, I got stuff all over, everything like that. And he's still in a shorts and t-shirt, and we're just going for a walk out in the snow. <laughs> and he sits down, he just starts melting everything around him. And I, and I had to talk to him about this, you know. <laughs> and he says, oh yeah, it's just right here. It's just how much you can just adjust it with your intention. And once you set that, uh, then that's your temperature. And so I've never been cold since then. I just don't get cold hardly at all. I mean, I still wear jackets and things, but I never get cold. The disc that pops out. What's really interesting is almost everybody got this one wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 80% or something. Um, and it took us a long time to figure it out. And then when we did figure it out, it took us even longer time to figure out what it did and it changes the nature of the chakras. Uh, you have to, it's, it's not like a really, really bad thing, but it, it kind of, it's like taking a camera and putting it out of focus. It, it, it's not a good thing. But it's really easy to correct. It's just wherever you have it, you just send it to the proper place and then that's it. it just, it's just intention, it just takes a second and it's over with. But right now, uh, everybody just, Take your hands and tell me by your hands where you think your, your, your disc is crossing through your body. One major disc that runs through the whole thing that's usually as wide as your entire, it's the length of the Merkaba. It looks like a flying saucer, but inside there's a flat disc actually. Okay, you all had different ideas. There's people, a lot, a lot of people were up here at the heart, some people were up here, some people were down here. Uh, just quickly, this star tetrahedron, if you look at it from 
directly through one of them, you'll, then the stars are equal. But when you're looking at it sideways like that, like this, uh, it's, it kind of looks like this. And then these stars are smaller. I, I exaggerated it a little bit. These are smaller and these are bigger. And the disk runs directly through the center of it. Exactly. One half of it is above, one half is below. And this is where you're, the base of your spine. So if you're sitting in here, you're, and you're this, in essence, if you were sitting on the ground, your disc is the floor. There's about a sixteenth of an inch difference. And, but, and so if you've got it up here, or up here, or somewhere else like that, wherever you had it, um, you just have. To, we're going to make all these corrections when we get back from the thing. There's going to be more. But all you do is with your intention, you just bring it down to wherever it is so it's down there. If you're sitting on a chair, it's, it's the chair, pretty much. Uh, that's kind of an important correction. Okay, close your eyes again. And look at your... Te- either look, see, or sense, or feel your tetrahedrons. And see if one of them is bigger than the other. Your first view, um, that's usually correct. And so, how many people found that one of them was bigger than the other? Uh, it, it's probably more than that. Um, because what these tetrahedrons are, is they represent all the polarities in your body in different ways. Every single one of them. But the primary one, the one that where it all begins with, is the top one is your daddy and the bottom one is your mommy. That's the polarity that uh, it all started with. And when you, especially in the first from conception to the first three years of life, if, uh, if one of your parents was uh, violent with you or angry with you or, or abusive to you in some way, uh, a, a child experiences pain on a level that we don't remember as adults. It's really huge. And they do all these things to get rid of this pain and everything. But uh, the, the, uh, what happens is the child uh, backs away from that parent internally in their heart. And... Uh, and they are protecting themselves, really, from the pain. And so uh, what happens is, in the tetrahedrons, uh, the tetrahedron gets smaller. It tightens up. And so uh, if, you put the, if you put your tetrahedrons on the screen, you can just look and see what... Just by looking at it, you're going to know pretty much what your relationship with is your, with your mother or your father by seeing those tetrahedrons. And... Uh, and you, uh, all I can say now is it's, you need, uh, if you can, if it's any possible in any way that you can, you, you need to begin to release these traumas uh, that originated with your mom and your dad, if there are any. And then really you need to start then going through all the other people <laughs> all the way up and release them all. That's what I was talking about before because your, your emotional traumas will stop you. But uh, I just wanted you to know that, that, that uh, if you have one bigger than the other, that's what's going on. You have, a, you have a, uh, something to, uh, against them. You might have both of them. Both parents did it, and you'll see both of them, even though they should be out here, they're in here, and they're smaller. And uh, I just wanted to make you aware of that, really. Um, we talked about reverse spin. Oh yeah, this is another one that a lot of people do. Hopefully there's nobody here doing this. Some people take a set of these like this, and instead of connecting to the big ones that are around their body, they see, usually it's a visual thing, they see a small set of them like this sitting out in front of them. And so when they're going through the, the white light and the top one and the bottom one and going back and forth and they're doing all the things, they're seeing it happen in front of them. They're not actually doing it. Is there anybody doing that here? You are? Anybody else? Um, well, 
I hate to be the person to tell you this, but it doesn't work. It, it just simply won't create a Merkaba field. It, it, uh, what happens is uh, the, the only way that you can do it is to uh, shift that from those to the actual set, because the, the mind and the heart has to connect to the real thing. And if it tries to connect to an imaginary one that's out in front of you, uh, it just won't work. And so uh, when you get a chance, you need to do that. Really, instead of seeing one out there, you've got to actually see or sense or feel. You don't have to see them. If you can't see them, that's what a lot of times that's what happens, is you can't see them, so you, you can see them better if you do them in front. But you, you must connect with the real ones, because otherwise the living field won't, won't, won't generate itself. Yes. How do you connect with something that you can't see, sense, or feel? If if my intention is just to allow it to do what it does naturally, and I don't have any any tactile or sense of what they are, how do you connect to that? Well, there's a lot of things we can't see, sense, or feel, but we know it. It's like Bluetooth, you know. You don't see the stuff going between there, but you know it's real because it, you can talk on this and it's down there. Uh, and some things we can't see, like air, but we know it's there because when it blows hard, we can feel it. But um, that was the problem in the beginning when we first started teaching these out to the world is that uh, nobody could see or sense these things out there. Even though they're really there, you can put them on a computer screen, but uh, very few people can do that because of the, what is required. Uh, the technology to require to do that is very, 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 very expensive. And so it, it, it's only happened, just uh, the Russians have done it, and I'm sure the United States has done it, but probably not too many other people have done it. And uh, it, it almost takes faith, in a way. Uh, I'll take this to, to another level in terms of um, when people have um, what I've seen after... I don't know how many, I have no idea how many people I've been in front of with this and, and looking at their fields. But I've talked to lots of them. And, um, and what I find is that there, there's a spectrum. And, and one end of the spectrum is a person that, f that doesn't sense or feel anything when they do this. They, there's just nothing going on at all. And then on the other end of the spectrum is a person who has probably been doing meditation for many lifetimes and is aware of this on another level. And they do this and instantly. They float off the ground. They can put their hands through walls and they can do all these things. And they go, oh, yeah, it's easy. And, uh, but what we have is a spectrum in between those two poles. And, and most people are somewhere in there, uh, somewhere. And uh, they, they'll feel it, but they can't see it or they can see it, but they can't feel it, or, you know, there's all kinds of things. Uh, what I do know is it doesn't make any difference. Uh, the Merkaba is just as real to that person as floating off the ground than to someone who can't feel anything. It's just as valid and functioning just as well. Uh, but uh, it is a problem. And, and there's a pretty significant amount. It's like about 15% or so of the people uh, can't feel a thing. Uh, and then others can. And you see this. If you start talking to people in here, you'll see that some, uh, some people can actually see, which is the hardest of all. If you can actually see your makaba, uh, that that's hard for me. It takes, it takes, I have to sit for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Keep getting slow enough to be able to get down to be able to sense those things. And uh, I was a really bad student anyway. The, <laughs> the angels kept going, oh God, drum you know. low. <laughs> they would, you know, I'll never forget when they, they told me to make the, one of these out of cardboard. And I didn't know what I was making. They hadn't told me yet what it was yet. And I, and I'm, so I'm holding this little tiny cardboard thing with about this big, and I'm going, you know, I'd never seen one before in my life. And then they start telling me about how important it is in the universe, and I'm going, <laughs> you've got to be kidding. This is, <laughs> you know, and then it took me a long time to get to the place where they said I had to do the meditation, but I just kept forgetting. 
I do it for three or four days, and then I'm off in the forest playing flute or something else like that. And then I go about two weeks, and they kind of tremble up. You've got to meditate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, a meditation thing. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and so we're all different. And we are who we are, and it's okay. Uh, this is not something... Uh, nobody's going to fail this. Uh, we're all going to be fine, and we're going to remember. But uh, it is kind of tricky. Uh, if you are in a position where you can't feel or sense or anything, you just have to go. This is where I think, uh, this is where my wife could step in, because she is pure female work. I'm pure male, pretty much, and she's pure female. And her work would uh, really help a lot of people like that because she doesn't do any of these things with logic. It's all just with images. And, uh, and she, can, she can move consciousness around with images. She's, she, and she's getting really good right now because she's been working for the last year and a half in Moscow for, uh, for uh, these large corporations, helping them. Uh, hmm? Yeah, Earl said. Earl Seb, right? Earl Seb. And she appears to really be helping them from, from what we're, the feedback that we're, what we're getting. And, um, and, but in teaching with them, she's learned a lot. She has re- she, she's got almost as much as they've got from her. She's got a lot from them. She's really fallen in love with them now. She, she loves the <laughs> Russians. <laughs> she... she it's, uh, it, I, I, she sees who they are because she's seen through their eyes so much and she understands all they've been through and all the pain and all the, all the stuff. And, and so uh, she, at first she didn't, she, she just wanted to do a couple and leave, but now she's at the point where she wants to keep doing this because it's, it's, she's learning so much and at the same time it's helping so many people. But uh, she may teach here next year we hope we're really Diane and I are both trying to get her to do this do four of them and uh, it's it's incredibly different than anything that I'm doing at all it's totally female and uh, there's there's no logic to anything there's no um, you, you know I, I listen to what she's doing and I, and and I, and I and I've been through it and I watch it and 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 you see all of a sudden she does something like see a tree now see a dog over here now see a star and you do that, and then everybody in the room cries. And you're going, <laughs> why? You know, well, there's no why. <laughs> Forget the why thing. It just does, you know, and, and, and I can't explain it. I, I'm, I've really tried. I've given up, kind of. Uh, I understand them a lot more than I did when I first started, but when you're male, you're just not female. And, and <laughs> Uh, it's just I can't get there from here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I I don't know what to say. Uh, that question has been asked of me so many times that I just don't know where to go with it because it, it you just have to hang in there long enough. Uh, with the work that we're doing today now, or, or over the next five days, uh, this it may change for you completely because now it's not about an outer field. It's about your heart and your inner work. And, uh, and, and once you can... The, the Merkaba is pretty much useless until the, it's connected to the heart. And, uh, and then uh, you don't even need to think about that at that point. There's, there's the, the way that, that life uses it is kind of like uh, a, a remote... Uh, uh, it, it, it kind of uses it like a like a television or so. It's like it's a thing out here that can create images. You'll you understand more. And you don't have to really think about it much. And once you really get into your heart, you can forget about doing all this stuff and everything. It, it, will, it will link solid. Um, and I'm just trying to encourage you a little. <laughs> Another question? Okay. Um, this happens just very rarely, but time to time I'll get really miz- dizzy and nauseous. Mm-hmm. And I was wondering what causes that. How long have you been doing the Merkaba? Since January. 
Well, we now have something superimposed over the top of this. Um, uh, I have, way back in the 90s, occasionally someone would say that they would get dizzy. And because you really are having something spinning around you at a very fast speed. But, uh, but my intuition is, is that uh, what's going on with you is probably not that, but it has to do with the magnetic field. Uh, when I talk about this, I think on the third day, um, there's a bunch of symptoms, and if you feel these symptoms, then you're going to realize what's going on, and then how, and then how to fix it is what we're trying to figure out now. And uh, so, and the world doesn't know what to do. All the world knows is, is that it is, uh, it's affecting people's health. And uh, okay, let me keep going with this a little bit more. Another thing, just so you know, is that uh, when you're making the Merkaba field, uh, the analogy of a tree and a seed is very similar. It's a living field. It's not a mechanical thing, you know, like wheels rotating around or something. It, it's living. It's, it's, uh, I didn't understand it when I, when I first wrote those first two books. I thought it was the, the, the brain and the heart working, but it's, it's not. It's the left and right brain. The left brain is going this way and the right brain is going that way. And, uh, and it has a... Uh, it, but it's, a li- it's alive. It's part of your consciousness. It's not something separate from you. It is part of you. And eventually you're going to find out it's way more than you think it is. It's, it actually is the universe itself. But we haven't got there yet. But the, uh, but the analogy is like uh, when you're just starting this, normally it takes a very, very long time and it happens naturally. It just occurs. If you, if you reach a certain level of consciousness, no matter what you look like externally, you reach, there's, consciousness is consciousness no matter what you look like. And, uh, and there's various levels of this. When you get to this level, this polarity consciousness level, uh, and you... Uh, When you start over, every, every day when you're doing this, you're actually bringing it from your navel up to your heart. And each day you're starting over. This is synthetic. This is not natural. This is not the way that normally happens. It normally happens over usually at least 100 to 150,000 years. Uh, before, And then you, one day you wake up and you go, oh, yeah. And you understand it. Well... Uh, it's just like uh, it's like a little tree. If you plant a if you plant a seed and you put it in the ground, you have to uh, keep watering that tree and protect it, and maybe put little things around it or a fence around it or something to protect it to grow up. And you have to keep watering it every single day, or or you have to keep your attention on it. But once that tree gets up, you know, pretty big. Uh, you can kind of let go. It, it will take off on its own. It's got its roots down in there. It's, it's, it's connected into water, and, it, and that's it. You don't have to do, protect it anymore. It'll take off. And the Merkaba is the same kind of way. When you first start doing it, it requires a lot of attention, and it takes about two years. And you have to keep doing this every year, every day, and you have to keep... It's a long process. But after two years, uh, the Merkaba is permanent. It, it's not going to stop ever again. It'll just take off as part of your... Even if you were to die and reincarnate, your Merkaba would still be with you. It would stay with you. It's part of your consciousness now. It isn't part of the body. It's part of your consciousness. But your body is part of your consciousness too. Yeah, It's not separate from your consciousness either. After you finish the Merkaba meditation and you walk around and you are aware of the Merkaba field, you see the center of the spheres in the heart chakra or in the, in the navel. And if you already see it here, why do you need all the time when you begin to start it from the navel and bring it back to that? Uh, the reason is because uh, everybody ha- is centered at the navel right now. And that's because the earth is. The earth is, has been centered there for a long time. And, uh, and, but where, we're, where she's going and what she's doing with hers and what we're trying to get everybody else to, to trigger is to move it up to the heart chakra. And so on the 14th breath, we move it up to the heart chakra, but that's only good for 47 hours, and, and it will die after 47 hours. And so once a day, or definitely before the 47th hour, 
you have to do this again, and you do it by starting all over again and bringing it back up. It's not natural, it's synthetic. Everything that the earth has been doing with consciousness is synthetic. If you go way back into the Egyptians 6,000 years ago, they were building pyramids, physical pyramids, using rods, tuning forks, frails, all these things to raise consciousness. And uh, it's, it's not normal, it's synthetic. 6,000 years before that, a little more, we, uh, we basically got a bump on our head. Something happened during the time of Atlantis that caused us, we were already entering into that level. And then we lost it and we came down. And then so life said, if we hadn't have already entered into it, uh, the rest of the universe would not have allowed us to do what, what I'm doing now. But because we'd already entered into it, and it really was only a small number of people, but nevertheless, we, we had got it. And, uh, but because we had achieved it once, then they gave us permission to go back and do it again. But, but in doing it, we're doing it synthetically. And, uh, uh, and it doesn't always work. Uh, we've watched many, 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 many planets go through this before, and a lot of times, I don't know what the percentage is, but uh, it works more than it doesn't work, but still, there's lots of times when it doesn't work and the whole planet just dies, doesn't make it. And um, so you have to know that it's not, this is not a normal thing. And this is just one way with that they have found a long time ago that works. But eventually you'll bring it up here about two years from, if you just started today, in about two years from now you'll bring it up here and it'll just stay there and you don't even have to do this ever again or anything. It's going to stay there. It's just part of you. So, so when you see during the day, you see it in the heart chakra? Yeah, during the day you're up here. But then every time you start over, you've got to bring it back down here and bring it back up. It's kind of like, you know, like one of these wheels and playgrounds where they're, and you have to just keep giving it a push to keep it spinning. You have to keep doing this. You have to bring your hand back over here and do it again and bring it over here and do it again. And then, but eventually, uh, if that wheel is done right through, through uh, vacuum energy, uh, it would just keep going forever. How many people, when they were doing this, uh, I know, because I, I was following my instructions from the angels, and they said to, on the top one to see white light in it, like lightning which is just the color of pure prana. And, uh, and then you move it down to the other one. How many people notice as you started doing this, and there's, n- there's nothing wrong with this, how many people notice that when you started doing it, it wasn't white, it started changing colors and started becoming all different kinds of colors? Let me, can, you, let me, can I see with hands how many people that? There's no rules. Uh, well, what is really going on is the angels gave it to this, well, I, I understood this later from them, they gave us a kind of like a generic version of it. And, uh, and they assumed that you were going to learn these things as you went along, uh, what, what was really going on here. And interesting enough, not very many people did. Um, it's communication. It's communication between your higher self and you. And, uh, and if you watch these colors changing and everything else like that, you have to feel them. You can't think of them logically, but it's like listening to music. You can't go. You can get into the logical side of music, but it's boring. But uh, but you uh, you have to feel them, and uh, and if you do, you will feel what they're saying to you. They're trying to communicate with you, and it isn't just sight and that. It's all of your senses. It's all fi- all of them. You have, right now, you have five. You're going to have six pretty soon. And actually seven, and then it jumps to 12, 13. We're, we're going to be at about 13 here, not too long from now. But uh, right now we have five. So there's sight, there's sound. How many people hear their Merkaba? I know you do. <laughs> you told me. You do? You do? Um, well, uh, there's other things. There, there's smell. There's uh, uh, a lot of people smell flowers or or free, different kinds of things that are in the air around there. It's usually very positive, but if it's negative, what we, when we say positive or negative, that's just because we're in polarity consciousness. If, you, if you're communicating with your higher self, which is in unity consciousness, they don't see that. 
that uh, they don't think that way. And, uh, and so, uh, and then there's the touch. Has anybody ever done their Merkaba and then felt? <laughs> felt yourself? Or, or felt something touching you? Or Yeah, I mean, when you get to touch, uh, your higher self is really close. <laughs> they are really, really, really close. They are really focused on you. Now we're going down to the angel ceremony. This begins this whole workshop. And this is a very important ceremony. What it does is it begins to open our hearts in a way that we normally don't encounter in our everyday lives. And through a very sacred way where I bless in the four directions and I make a sacred space for us all, I have you chant who, which is H-U. While you're chanting that, I will be going around and doing something that temporarily brings all of your chakras into balance. It doesn't last a long time, but it helps in this ceremony. And then after we do that, I will say prayers, and we will then get to the angel ceremony. The angel ceremony is a very specific thing. It is very old. Every person on earth has two angels that are connected to them. They may not know this, but they have to have two in order to have polarity. And there are two of you on earth. You divide your spirit into two different people, usually one male and one female. And there's an angel associated with each one of those people. And this one angel will know who they are. Now, you may not even believe in angels. You may not think that they're real, but just go through this anyway. What happens here is that a real angel is going to stand in front of you and then at the right time in this ceremony, with your permission of course, we will turn them around where they're facing toward the center of the circle. They're going to move back and become part of you for the next five days. They will be part of your body. They will sleep with you, they will look through your eyes, and they will begin to help you understand what is about to be presented to you. When you have a problem, and you don't understand something, you can close your eyes, connect with this angel that you're going to soon become familiar with, and they can tell you anything you need to know. It is the beginning of what is called your higher self. A higher self has higher selves to higher selves. There are many higher selves, other beings that actually are you on another level of existence. They actually interface directly in the fourth dimension with human beings and they are you, and you exist on that level also. And so this is who you're going to be connecting with. When they walk back into your body, it is not somebody else. It is you on another level of existence. And for this reason, it's okay. You can relax and let this happen. Once it does happen, uh, they will stay here for the entire five days that we are doing this workshop. And then at the end of those five days, they will leave you. If you wish them to stay longer, that's between you and them, and you can talk to them. But right now, it's only for these five days. This is the prayer that we say right before we bring in the angels. And this is how the prayer goes. Great Spirit, Mother, Father, Child, God, Creator of all life everywhere, we thank you for these circles, and we thank you for the love that is flowing through these circles. For without this love, we would never be able to see you in the eyes of every person before us. And may all the beings of light who wish there to be love and truth and beauty and trust, harmony and peace and reverence for God, may the beings that hold these principles and that are working with us now be here to help us so that we can understand what is being given to us and we can live it and breathe it and make it real here on earth now and today. Now for the angel ceremony, we are going to invite the angels in at this time. And I want you to go inside yourself to invoke them or ask them to come out and to be here in front of you. And when they are here, whether you can see them or sense them or feel them, it doesn't matter. They will be here. And this will be the beginning, something that may entirely change your whole life.